Hi, this is Jack Buffington for Hackaday.com. Today we're going to start a multi-part series using the Pololu 3Pi robot. What this is is a nifty little robot that has the Atmel AT Mega 328P chip as its main controller. And in this series we'll be using this robot and checking out different parts of the processor and how to program for it. Doing things like motor control, blinking LEDs, reading buttons, making sound, and uh, reading analog to digital values. So let's get started. Let's take a look at the 3Pi robot. It's a pretty nice robot. I've, I've seen many robot kits over the years and, and uh, this one really takes the cake. It has some great motors that go nice and fast. It's not using uh, modified servos is what quite a lot of them use and they're really slow. This one's peppy. It has some uh, line sensors on the back or these are actually infrared uh, reflective sensors. It has five of those. It has uh, room for four AAA batteries. So that gives it a pretty decent run time. It has, I believe this is a two line by eight character LCD. We've got LEDs that are controllable. We have a little speaker, tiny little speaker. We have room for expansion port that has some extra IOs. We have the power button, a reset button, and then three little buttons here. On the bottom of it, uh, we've already talked about the reflective sensors. We have a little trim pot. This, this one's kind of a little awkward, uh, but uh, this is connected up to the analog to digital converter to let you make uh, an adjustment to some value in your program or just learn how to use the analog to digital converter. The motors are set up in a really nice way where the voltage from the batteries is boosted to a higher voltage and then regulated back down to five volts, I believe. And why that's great, it sounds like a really silly thing to do, but why that is great is because throughout the life of your batteries, your motors will always run at the same speed when you give them a, a certain speed to go, uh, which is awesome. These motors are run in an open loop fashion, which means that they don't have any feedback coming back to the processor to tell them how fast they're going. So this strategy uh, allowed them to avoid using a costly encoder on each wheel. So now that I've explained what this robot's capable of, let's look at what you need to do to set up the environment. So here we are at pololu.com. Uh, it's hard to say, here's how you spell it. We're going to go into their robot kits and scroll down to get to their 3Pi robot. Once we're on that page, we're going to click on resources, which brings up this. Now, we're going to download something, but it's inside of their library user's guide, strangely. In here, we'll go to download instructions number two. Now we're at the download link. So right here is a big download that's an installer for AVR Studio 4, the driver for their programmer. It has the library for their orangutan and 3Pi uh, robot and uh, probably a few other things seems like quite a lot of stuff installs. So go ahead and download that. This only works for Windows. Uh, you'll have to figure out your own way on Linux or Mac. Uh, I don't use those, so I don't really know how, how to go about with that. But once you download that, then we can we go and install it. And if you go on to your C drive, You'll find this library right here, uh, libpolulu-avr. If you go into there, 
you've got a few things, but the important one is examples. We go into examples and look at AT Mega 328P. This is where you will find all of the files that you will need for your 3Pi robot if you want to get started quickly. What all these files are, are examples of showing how to use pretty much everything. But the one thing that it does do is it uses their libraries. So all of that is sort of hidden from you on how it's actually working. But let's say you're teaching a beginner programming course and you don't want your students to have to deal with setting up all the, the registers inside of the processor in order to do things. This can be a good way that people can get started without being super intimidated. So let's take a look at one. Uh, I don't know. We're going to do uh, push buttons one. The APS file is the file that uh, AVR Studio will load. So I just clicked on that. It's loading. There is a newer version of AVR Studio that I understand is pretty good and has some pretty major benefits over Studio 4, but I have not run it, so I couldn't tell you, uh, I couldn't give you an opinion on it. This is what I hear, so it's good. So you can see right here, they have things defined. Uh, you can get button presses just by calling a function. You can, uh, you can drive the motors, I think it's set motors or set underscore motors and then you give it values and the motors will run. It makes it real easy. Uh, so not only do they have a fantastic uh, circuit board but they've got a really great uh, programming environment set up. And if you are so inclined you can actually program this as a Arduino I understand. I haven't done that but uh, they, have, they have libraries for Arduino as well. Right here I have the programmer that I'm using to program the 3Pi. And this is Palulu's programmer. I think it's only like 12 or 15 bucks. It's pretty cheap as programmers go. I'm kind of used to spending at least 50 bucks up to maybe 250 for a simple programmer. But this one works as both the in-circuit serial programmer and as a serial port. So I can leave this plugged into the robot and open up a terminal program and see uh, serial output from the robot. It's pretty cool. If we go back to the computer, we can see how to program this. So I'm going to do that right now, actually. I'm going to, I'm plugging the, I've plugged the programmer into the robot. And to compile something, I just hit F7. And let's see if we had any. So it said build succeeded with zero warnings. That's good. And now we go into tools, program AVR, and we connect. And we need to select the programmer as AVR ISP. We just leave it on auto, figure out what port it's on, and click connect. And in a second, after it's found it, we get this window that pops up. And I forget what this is. So this is pushbuttons1.test.c. So we need to load that up. We'll go into the computer. Samples, 228p, pushbuttons1. We go into the default directory, and right here is the file we're looking for. Uh, in order to program, you need a .hex file. So we'll open that up, and all we have to do is turn on our robot, which right now it's going to want to drive around like crazy. But I just click Program, and now it is all ready. And so this is telling us waiting, which we can see right here in the code. It prints that out to the LCD screen. And I guess it's waiting for 
top and bottom button. So let's look at what it does here. There we go, bottom, and I guess, uh, let's just guess this one. There we go, top down, and I bet you the middle doesn't do anything. So there you go, we just took a look at the Pololu 3 Pi robot. We downloaded the development environment for C, and we installed it. We showed you how to program it. Next week, we're going to continue on and start exploring things in greater detail. Rather than using their libraries, we'll create our own so that we can see in the nitty gritty detail what exactly is going on inside of the robot and how to use the processor. For Hackaday.com, this is Jack Buffington, signing out.